Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I know all of you have been telling me that you want to see more comparison videos, and so that's exactly what we're going to do today. The 2023 Acura MDX versus the 2023 BMW X5, and right off the top, there is a big difference here in the respect of the starting price. $49,550 on the MDX. We're gonna jump up to $61,600 on the X5. What other differences are there between these two models? Well, let's start our tour and we'll find out. Starting off with the head-on view, you can see a big difference in the overall design of the front ends, but the size of the vehicles are relatively the same. The double kidney grille on the BMW will definitely set it off a little bit less space taken up with the width of the grille on the BMW, but as we move over to the Acura MDX, well, you have a much wider grill. In fact, to me, it looks like it's in motion. And it's kind of an interesting thing because I had somebody that made a comment on one of the videos. To me, it looks like somebody took the Acura logo and just kind of threw it into the center of the grill and created a ripple effect where everything is moving out from the grill or from the logo right there. But somebody else said in the comments on a recent video that to them, it looks like everything is coming towards that Acura logo. Tell me what your thoughts are on that. Kind of an interesting thing, but it is there. Interesting comparison. But if you like that classic BMW look with the kidney grill here, the double kidney grill, well, then you're probably going to be running over here to this side. Two completely different looks when it comes to the headlight housings, a more narrow, slender look on the MDX. It doesn't look bad. Everything's LED, but when we go over here to BMW, well, it looks like a BMW here on the X5. The nice daytime running lights, LED again everywhere we look. Completely different look as far as the turn signal goes. People say you don't use your turn signals when you drive a BMW. Well, this one must be extra special because it has them right here, but it's vertical and over here the horizontal look with what we have on the mdx either way a very nice look we're going to have a lot of gloss black here on the x5 and then a lot of chrome over here almost so this is gonna be a little bit dependent on the trim level but both looking very nice and as we work our way in the thing i like here is that you do have completely different looks on the hoods but both look nice both look luxurious but at the same time still have a little bit of that sporty flair as far as the lines go a little bit more of a slope a little bit more of a rounded look here on the x5 giving it a little bit more of a racy look doesn't necessarily mean it's faster does it well looks don't mean everything but sometimes they do Turn signal indicators built into both side view mirrors, but you can see the difference with what we have on the BMW compared to that of the Acura. Look from this direction, both very nice large mirrors. You're gonna have body color on your door handles, but again, trim level. If you like gloss black, you're going to like what you have here on the X5. If you're more into the chrome look, that's what we're gonna have with the Acura give you a quick look here at the roof rails and then we're again over here with the black roof rails on the x5 and let's see if we can give a good look here at the rear roof spoiler for the bmw the one thing that i wish both models did both have nice sloping rear windows a nice line but both also have the exposed rear window wipers. I always like to see car makers hide those away inside of the rear roof spoiler. But for the average person, that is probably not that big of a deal. Tail lights again, everything going to be LED. Both look very nice, but you'll notice if you like a larger tail light housing, well, the X5 is probably going to be higher on your list. Does anybody actually go to the car dealership and say, I want the largest tail light housing on my vehicle that I can find? Probably not. <laughs> but one thing you will find here that is gonna be consistent, even though they look different from one another, they are both functional with the exhaust finishers. You can see the exhaust pipes coming out right there on both models. And that is a great segue to talking about the comparison between what is under the hood from one model to the next. 
Under the hood of the MDX, the 3.5 liter six cylinder, 290 horsepower, 267 pounds feet of torque. It's mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission. Now this is going to be the lesser horsepower of the two. So that means it's going to have the better gas mileage, right? Well, let's take a look and see exactly what those numbers are. We're looking at 19 city, 25 highway. 21 combined and 4.8 gallons of gas is what Acura says you should use for every 100 miles driven. One thing I do like here between the two, I know the average owner is probably not going to open the hoods on these vehicles, but the thing I like is that you pull on the hood latch or the hood release in the interior and then you have to come in and actually use the hood latch right here to open the hood. On the BMW, you pull on the latch on the interior two times, and then all you have to do is come and pick up on the hood. Both do have the hood struts to help hold them up when you open the hoods. But let's talk about the difference in numbers as far as what we have here under the hood of the BMW. If you were going to attempt a drag race between these two, well, you would definitely want to hop into the driver's seat of the X5 because it has the three liter six cylinder under the hood. A little smaller on the engine, it makes a difference. 389 horsepower, 443 pounds feet of torque, and it's mated to an eight speed automatic transmission. How about those MPGs? I was kind of messing with you earlier a little bit because, well, you might be surprised at what you get here with all that additional horsepower and torque. 21 miles per gallon city, 26 highway, 23 combined, and 4.3 gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. And obviously there are some differences under the hood as far as the overall look goes. With more performance, more power here, it might be more fitting that with the BMW, you have the brace right, these braces right here to help with rigidity. You don't have that underneath the hood here of the MDX. But then again, we're looking at some differences in packages. It's just all dependent on what's available on the lot when I come to pick these vehicles up. I likely don't have to tell you too much about the fact that obviously the BMW is going to tow more. We'll start with the MDX, 3,500 up to 5,000 pounds, depending on if you're front wheel drive or all wheel drive. If you want to tow more, the BMW 6,603 pounds. Now there is a big difference when it comes to versatility back here. Depending on your situation, it might work to just have a rear power tailgate like this that is just one piece. But if you want a split tailgate, now remember there is a big starting difference, starting price difference here with what we have. I'm gonna open that as well. There is your split tailgate, something you don't have over here. But again, pricing does make a difference where all of that is concerned. The split tailgate design can obviously offer a lot of versatility here. If it's just used for a place to sit, uh, you could use that to make it easier to load and unload cargo. There's a lot of different things that can come up with that. But the big difference is what does it come down to when we're talking about usability? We know that the X5 tows more, but which one has more cargo capacity? Cargo capacity with the MDX ranges between 18.1 cubic feet up to a maximized 95 cubic feet. You do have the 12 volt power outlet, the hanger right here that you can conceal or drop down into place to use. There is more space underneath the floor and there is a spare tire underneath the vehicle. In fact, let's take a quick look at that. There you go. You can see that it is indeed there. And to maximize cargo capacity, well, it's pretty simple. Let's just do this. We're just gonna go right here and pull down on the lever. That's how you're gonna maximize cargo space in the MDX. Yes, it is a three row vehicle. I don't have the third row up right now, but we'll maybe look at that later on and show you how much space there is. But there is one big difference here, something that you have on the MDX that you don't have on the BMW. It's called the walk away feature. That's what this button is right here. So here's what's gonna happen. Instead of pushing the button right there to lower the tailgate, which within a few seconds, it's going to start lowering. If you were standing here and you just wanted to push that button like this, notice it beeped, but notice the tailgate has not moved. It's not going to move until I move. 
just to give you a little bit of a look, I'm going to stand here for a few seconds. Now I'm going to walk away and watch what happens. It automatically closes. So that is different other than, you know, di when you compare it to other features as far as using the remote or the button on the interior or even the hands-free function. This one does have the hands-free function. That's why you have the button right here. Excuse me, not the button, the sticker right there. Yes, that's right. Y'all can make fun of me down in the comments now that I said that. That's not a button, is it? So how about the X5 cargo capacity? Well, it is going to be a little bit less. 33.9 to 72.3 cubic feet. We'll go and take a look inside here. Here's what you're going to do to lower the seats. Obviously, you can do this on both sides. Very easy to do, but you don't have that walk away feature as you do with the MDX. I don't know that that's that big of a deal to most people. That may be one of those features where a lot of people don't even realize it's there. We do have the cargo cover installed here, but that is removable if needed. That has some big advantages. We do have a panoramic sunroof here in the X5. Good news for those of you who are fans of panoramic sunroofs. You also have one here in the Acura MDX as well. And you can change the height of this door. I'm going to raise that up just a little bit. In fact, I'll tell you what, I will pull it down and it says right here, hold to set height. So you can see that all I'm going to do is hold that down until it beeps a few times. Then we'll close the rear door and we'll see that when I open it back up, it's gonna open up to the height where I just set it right there. A pretty simple thing to do, not a big deal. I don't know that you would even need to do that because this vehicle isn't that high. And with the other options to be able to close that lift gate, that tailgate right there, well, you really don't need such a thing. Both vehicles, by the way, are all wheel drive. All right, back seat time. Let's see what we have. On the rear doors here, you do have the privacy shades. I have one in place and one that's not, just so you can see the difference. Soft touch materials. And when you push down on it with your finger and it really does feel soft, you know it's gonna feel soft to the touch when you put your arm on there with the armrest test. Very nice looking interior. We're gonna have a nice large door bin right here. And then we'll also have the rear seat pockets, a little bit of space there. And then the controls here for the air conditioning. We do have tri-zone climate control here, dual in the front, single in the rear, and then all the different functionality you need there. Also the 12 volt power outlet. We're going to have the USB options as well as another power outlet option. So quite a bit going on there for passengers here in the middle row of the MDX. And one thing I did want to show with the third row in the MDX, well, you want to see how much space you have. Here's what you have for leg space. You can increase that quite a bit. So I have the other side over there all the way back. This one's all the way forward. I don't know that anybody would sit there like that, but we'll do that anyway just for the heck of it. So let's hop into the rear seating area. I told you I would do this, so I better keep my word. So we'll go ahead. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is just pull that all the way back. And you can see that I do have, well, not much leg space here, but you know what? As a five foot 10 adult, I could sit back here for a while, maybe not a long road trip, but there is enough space back here to keep me comfortable. We've got a USB option right there, cup holder, and obviously we're gonna have plenty of airflow into this rear seating area but it's all going to have to come from up there because you don't actually have any air conditioning vents back here. By the way, if you need to get out, you're stuck in the rear seat area. Well, it's pretty easy to do. Just push that button. The seat automatically moves up and out of the way. By the way, this middle seat is removable. All you're going to do is pull on that release. And there's another one down here. I can't do this one handed, but if I pull on that, that allows me to tilt this seat up and out of the way. You can see that you do have the cup holders and the space for snacks and whatever else anybody wants to put there. And I don't have the tool to release the seat belt. So you'll just have to take a look at it this way. But like I told you, you can remove this middle row seat or the middle seat in the middle row. And taking a look in through the doors for the rear seating area, again, very soft. This is a little bit softer, I think, than what we have on the MDX. Give it the armrest test. Very comfortable, large door bins. And let's take a look at what we have in the way of space in this rear seating area. You do see 
that you have connectivity options and we're also going to have a little bit more down here let's see if i can get that out and show you there is the 12 volt power outlet now you don't have the adjustability here at the price point i would think that would be here that's a difference between these two models obviously the kids can have their screens mounted back here if you have that package everything's available to go there that is really nice i must say now you don't have the ability to remove the seat here this is all one solid piece so you can't do that you do have the fold down armrest with the cup holders built in let's see if we can get that to go up for us come on there we go and then we also have the space underneath not quite as much it's wider but it's not as deep but i do like the fact that you can conceal the cup holders away as you can right there quite a bit of space back here and a good look at the ambient lighting within the interior and how about the remotes well you can see that both are very nice the bmw remote is a little bit smaller a little more compact both do have remote start and everything that you would expect to see i would imagine take a look at the back of the mdx key or remote i should say it's not a key is it and the back of the bmw remote not a key again and taking a look in through the front passenger side door the thing that stands out to me the most is you're going to have seat memory on the passenger side that means obviously if you have it on the driver's side as well soft touch materials here again comfortable armrests large door bins power seats for the driver and the passenger and there is a decent amount of gloss black throughout the interior I mean, varying opinions as to what people think about that but i can guarantee you one thing I'm not going to find any gloves in the glove boxes on either vehicle, but a nice material in there, nice felt lined glove box, a lot of space there. So there we go. There are your USB options. Quite a bit going on here. Push button shifter. What do you think about that? Do you like it? Do you not? And we'll take a look at some of the other features as well as we go through this area. Here are your cup holders wireless charging a nice large lid for the console that doubles as an armrest and then you have two different options here you have this little area kind of a nook of sorts and then the deeper console so there is a lot of space there the 12 volt and the usb option are found within that area as well and we're going to find a sunglass holder something we don't see in a lot of vehicles it seems these days and let's look at the sun visor there's the vanity mirror hi everybody got our light right there and then let's see what happens here we're going to pull that all the way back that completely covers the window i like that that's a good thing no sun will be getting through when you put that in place right here the oh crap handle for 290 horsepower if the driver decides to exercise that out on the road well they can and well they're the oh crap handles for everybody to grab onto if necessary and there are going to be some differences here with the x5 we're going to start with the nice comfortable armrest that one definitely has more padding a little more plush to it but guess what one thing you won't find on this model that is more expensive don't have seat memory on the passenger side the seats are passenger or excuse me power for the passenger and driver boy those tongue twists just seem to come more and more often for some reason <laughs> it's a lot to think about we're going to open up the glove box the same felt lining here i told you we wouldn't find any gloves right there and i wasn't kidding was i here is your cup holders you've got connectivity in a few different areas as well and then let's see here there's your wireless charging pad gonna be right there you can see some of the ambient lighting really well also everything for controlling the air conditioner right there and the bombay door set up here let's see if we can get both doors to open there we go for the center console and you will find connectivity there as well so quite a bit going on here one thing that's different if you don't like push button shifters guess what you have well it's kind of a combination of push button because there's a button over here on the side that you need to push to go into reverse drive all that good stuff and then a push button for the power parking brake and here is the button for starting and shutting off the engine and again gloss black there are some gloss black accents throughout the interior here one thing you won't find is a sunglass holder so if you're looking for the sunglass holder well the mdx may be your option a different setup on the 
vanity mirror. We're going to have the light above instead of part of this area right here. And let's see here. What about the test for the visor? Doesn't come quite as far back. It's also not quite as large as what we have in the MDX. And taking a look in through the driver's side door on the MDX, you can see all of the controls that you have right here. I don't really have to tell you much about that. You already know that you have seat memory there, three different settings for the driver. If you have it for the passenger, you're definitely going to have it for the driver. A tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. It is power adjustable. And we'll hop inside here and you do get some graphics and some sound when you hop into the interior. And let me pull this off just so it makes it a little bit easier to show you that screen up there. Now, instead of having the button down here to start and shut down the engine, it's up here on the dashboard and a little bit more of a conventional location, at least in my particular thought process, it seems that way. We're gonna have a nice digital instrument cluster that looks very modern, something that will definitely be found in both vehicles. And then our shifter paddles right here, we're going to have the controls for the wipers on the front and rear windows and the controls for the lights right here, the headlights, taillights, all that good stuff, and the fog lights on the front end. Also, that's for your blinkers in case you wondered how to use those. For those of you who maybe have never had a vehicle that had that feature before. And I like the fact that you can easily see the head-up display with the background from the grass right there. It's not too bright outside today. That definitely helps. And the Acura MDX steering wheel right here. Again, I probably don't need to tell you much about what is there, but one thing that is gonna be a very big difference. Now, if Monk were to buy one of these vehicles, I think this would be it. It would probably be a little cleaner than it is right now, but it is what it is. But the reason I say that is because there would not be any fingerprints on the infotainment screen because that's not a touch screen. You manage everything right there. So all you're going to do is just run around with your finger. And when you get ready to select something, you actually have to push down on the pad. So let's just say we wanted to select navigation. I have to push down on the trackpad down there to do that. We're gonna go back. I just wanted to show you how some of that works. There you go with that. And what about the backup cameras? There's what you have, the overhead 360 degree view, very nice. We have multiple camera angles all around the vehicle. Let's see if we can show you some of those. There you go, you can see what's there. Let's see if we can get that to work. Come on, work for me. It's a little hard to do because I am not used to using this trackpad. But those are some of the big differences. You do have the dual zone climate control, like I mentioned earlier, and driving modes. Here's your mode selector. Let's see what happens when we change driving modes. There's sport, there's normal, there's comfort, and snow. You also have individual, and all you do to get to individual is push like that. So that's going to take you down there to individual, and then you can figure out what you need to do from there. Pretty simple to figure out, pretty simple to use. But if you're looking for a touch screen, we need to change interiors. By the way, something you won't get with the BMW, when you turn the engine off here, this is what happens. Let's see if we can get it to work. Yeah, it shows your MDX kind of driving away, almost saying goodbye. And we'll take a look in through the driver's side door on the X5. You will find seat memory here. Only two settings in that respect. Don't know that that's that big of a deal to most people. Obviously, power seats for the driver and the passenger. And instead of controlling the lighting here on the turn signal lever or the blinker stalk, it's all done right down here. Pretty simple. You can set that on auto if you want. You also have the power button right there or power control for your tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. And we're going to fire things up and you can see, again, a very nice look. There is your X5 on the digital instrument cluster. Also going to have everything there for navigation. Quite a bit going on here. And maybe more horsepower must mean larger shifter paddles because that's what you have here to control the eight speed automatic transmission control again for the wipers front and rear and contrary to what a lot of people say bmws actually do come with blinkers on them it's just that believe it or not some drivers choose not to use them but you don't have to drive a bmw for that to be the case do you so another difference here i like the look of the infotainment screen i like the fact that it's kind of tilted just a little bit towards the driver a little more driver focused with more horsepower i guess you should be more driver focused right but a very simple system to use here as far as the infotainment screen goes 
That's one thing. You might think a higher price might mean more challenging to use. It really isn't. It's not hard at all. You can see all your vehicle settings and different information here that you can go through. Depending on what you need to do, we'll go into reverse and show you the backup camera. The views here, you do have a nice clear view as far as the overhead 360 degree goes. Everything very nice and very easy. Now, I just hit active park assist there. Didn't mean to do that, but just to show you what's there. I do like the fact that it's very clear on both vehicles. And you do have driving modes, multiple driving modes here. So you can see that you just push on the appropriate area and it's going to change the driving mode. Let's see what we have here. There is adaptive. We'll go to Eco Pro. Sounds kind of interesting. Comfort and sport and you don't get all the sounds and everything that you do with the mdx over there but not a big deal necessarily you do have the ability to work your way around if you want to with the knob right here control you can go home you don't have to use the screen as a touch screen so if monk did buy an x5 well guess what right here is essentially the equivalency of a trackpad pretty simple to use and figure out again not quite the same as what's in the mdx if i had to say and be honest i think this one's a little bit more simplified but then again you can use your touch screen if you so desire to one thing i do like here if you want to go in and change your safety features you just push the button right there that's going to let you do that and i'll just use the trackpad here or the wheel the scroll wheel to go through and show you what's there so there's quite a bit going on depending on what you want to do what you want to change and what you want to see both vehicles have a very nice and comfortable roomy interior but what is it like to drive each one? Let's get out on the road and we'll find out. By the way, you do have a head-up display in both vehicles. A little bit nicer looking, I think, here with the BMW. A little more information. Both very bright and easy to see. But it is good to know that both come with that feature. All right, we're going to start out our test drive portion of the video with the X5. And I probably don't have to tell you that obviously the X5 is going to be well, more fun to drive when it comes to power because you have a good bit more of that. Handling is great, all-wheel drive for both models. A nice leather-wrapped steering wheel with this model. Everything is easy to get to. That's one reason why, well, it's really the only reason why you have a touchscreen here and don't have the touchscreen on the MDX because the screen is so much further away. You'd have to reach way up here to get to it just the way it's designed but overall a very enjoyable vehicle to drive easy to see out of and obviously plenty of power when you want to use it let's make the turn here and we'll just give it a little bit of gas not going to get into it too terribly much and I'm not even driving in sport mode. And that's kind of strange for me, isn't it? This road is a little bit more rough than what we were on back there and what we would be on up on the paved portion up there. So just to let you know for sure, it soaks up the bumps really well. But here's something to consider about that. When you're watching somebody on YouTube who's doing a car review, especially during the test drive, you really need to go drive the vehicles for yourselves. And the reason I say that is because of the fact that, well, Depending on what you're used to, you might say to yourself, you know, in my case, I'm going to say, this is a very comfortable vehicle. Somebody else might not think it's quite as comfortable as I think it is. And that's all dependent on what I'm used to as far as my daily driver goes. So that's the X5. Now let's hop over to the MDX and see what the difference is. Maybe I should blow this C8 Corvette off the road, but you know what? I won't. Okay, we're in the MDX. And even though there's not as much horsepower here. I'm driving in sport mode. Let's see if I can tell a difference. It does get up and run when you need it to. Wow, that actually is pretty impressive. So not everybody is looking for the most horsepower. and Not everyone's going to say that 290 horsepower is underpowered. Others will say that, but it really just depends on your given situation and what your needs are, or maybe just what your wants are. I don't know. For me, yeah, I like to have more horsepower. There's no doubt about that. But one thing I can say is that the ride quality here is good, at least in my personal opinion. It goes back to what I said in the previous test drive with the X5. You really need to get out and drive these vehicles for yourself. For me, it's comfortable. 
I could live with this no problem. Everything here, comfortable, easy to use, easy to learn. It's a little different because I know I'm wanting to reach up and use the touch screen, but like I showed you earlier, I mean, I can't even reach it without leaning way forward. So that's why you have that as it is. There is an obvious difference there, but you'll get used to it if you buy one of these MDX models. It's just like anything else. Once you're used to the trackpad down here and using that, you're not going to have any trouble with it. But overall, personally, if I had to choose between the two, ride quality is good. The steering wheels are both nice and comfortable. I believe these would be great for nice long road trips. But being that I'm a high performance enthusiast, yeah, I would choose the X5 really based on that more than anything else. Plus, I don't really need three rows. So, that would be my personal choice, but everybody has their preferences and why they choose what they do. Okay, now it's your turn to talk. Obviously, when it comes to buying, there are multiple trim levels, features, and options for each model that can really separate them apart quite a bit. Obviously, the price is also going to be a deciding factor, but tell me what your thoughts are. Which model do you like better? Do you like the BMW X5? Or are you in favor of the Acura MDX? Tell me what your answer is and tell me why you answered the way that you did. By the way, got to say a special thanks to my friends at Or Acura and Or BMW for loaning me both of these models for the day. And a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to take the time to watch and give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.